Pacific Drive is a game I want to talk about more because I, I feel like people haven't been talking about it enough. Uh, if you're new here, what I do is a lot of times I cover games on Game Ranks is Before You Buy, uh, the big review video where I go in depth. Uh, and then over here, I, I come around and if I really like a game or I find something interesting, I want to dive in a bit more. And with Pacific Drive, it's a lot of things. I was actually pretty wishy-washy with this one because when it was first revealed, visually it looked cool. It was like, ooh, that mysterious sci-fi car FPS. Uh, then I previewed it at PAX East like a year or so ago and started to read more and hear more about what the game actually was. And it sounded like it was kind of just like a weird run-based survival thing which is not something I necessarily always gravitate towards. But I think with Pacific Drive having played the, the main, the real released game uh, is that it's a lot more than that. If you haven't heard about it, you should definitely check it out. But uh, I do want to explain. So essentially what it is, is uh, it's, it's kind of like a stalker zone in the Pacific Northwest where there are scientific anomalies going on. A, a huge chunk of the region is walled off by the government and somehow you get sucked inside it and you're technically tied together with this old jalopy, this old like piece of shit station wagon car. And you're essentially progressing through the game, uh, driving into these zones, not open world, but big maps uh, to to essentially get through them. You have to collect special resources that allow you to open up a teleport uh, to then transport to the next play or technically transport back to your garage. Because in this world, the way matter works, like not everything can transport and it's kind of complicated, but it explains how it's kind of uh, based on like a roguelite run system uh, where you're trying to go, trying to get good stuff and survive and not lose it all. And it will happen. Uh, but you're coming back to your garage and then you're doing all types of crafting and research and custom customization stuff to your car and to your character to really uh, survive better out in this harsh, weird scientific landscape. So yes, you're looting, you're clicking on things, you're picking up scraps of metal, you're picking up copper wire, stuff that I've often found pretty boring in a lot of games, but I think it really all is saved by just how it's packaged together because all the stuff you're looting, every single piece of it feels like it actually matters. You're always gonna feel the squeeze. You're always gonna feel the need for a lot of it uh, to the point where it's not like you're collecting stacks and stacks and stacks of like wood or rocks like in a survival game. Uh, it's almost more like survival horror where you're getting the specific things you need and you're trying to hoard as much as possible, but you're still never really gonna have as much as you want and you're always gonna be stressed out about it. So that actually works coupled with the fact that this world is actually interesting and there's an interesting story worth pursuing. It's one of those games where uh, you're kind of just dealing with people over the radio. There are people in the zones and you're a voiceless protagonist and they're just kind of guiding you through it, explaining some of the lore and kind of dumping things on you, but in a way that actually makes sense and doesn't feel forced. Uh, and then there, you're also kind of unraveling a little bit more here and there of who these characters are. And when you find stuff, you find like, you know, cassette recordings or writings, all of it is actually interesting because you wanna know what's going on in this world. Uh, and the other people over the radio are very tied to this world. So you get to learn a little bit more about them, right? Uh, but the characters are compelling because uh, they are, they're portrayed very well. The voice acting, the writing really, really works. And I'm someone that, you know, only certain games, it really connects with me when you hear somebody over the radio the whole time and that's it. Think like uh, Bioshock or uh, Firewatch, I think really worked for that. But you know, there are some misses, but I think Pacific Drive, it does it pretty well. So you want to keep progressing, you want to keep pursuing, you want to find out what's next. You know, you can kind of do little expeditions and go out to branching areas to just get more loot uh, and do your own little missions and come back to just get stronger or you can try and just push through the through line to the main narrative. But that's where it gets tricky because the game can be very, very challenging, but in a different way, you know, like it's it's not like a Dark Souls where it's like, oh shit, I should have dodge rolled or oh man, I should have learned that parry or I should have learned that boss pattern. It's more like the game is just constantly trying to screw you over. The game is just like straight up trying to ruin your life. And that can be incredibly frustrating and at times feel unfair borderline bullshit. Uh, and I am usually really sensitive to that stuff. When I feel like a game is pushing against me so hard that it's like actively wasting my time, I usually kind of like, screw this. But with Pacific Drive, again, it's like all the elements really working well enough that I was willing to put up with that because 
I wanted to see what happened next. I wanted to get through to the end. I wanted to get to that portal at the end of the arena or the environment so that I could come back with some goodies for my car, something really valuable. I was absolutely hooked, addicted to these runs. And I think part of it was actually because they were so challenging. When you have to end a run, you have to find enough of this resource to activate a teleport, uh, like a big beam in the sky that happens on the other side of the map. And then you gotta race there as quick as possible because there's like a, um, uh, essentially a battle royale, like circle, like a storm that is slowly closing in on you. So you're ra you're barreling through, you have all these weird scientific abominations and creatures and mysterious things trying to destroy your car or just knock you off the road constantly. And it's gonna happen, but you're gonna fall off of a, a road and down a ravine and you're trying to crash through trees and bushes. You see that beam of light in front of you and you're like, I'm right there, come on, come on, come on. And the amount of times in this game I've gotten to that portal, that teleport, like, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Like by the skin of my teeth is so satisfying. It's a really good feeling. And one I just didn't expect for this type of game. I thought it was just gonna be cool sci-fi car game. And thankfully it does also scratch that itch. I think it does such an incredible job of atmosphere and world building from the uh, anomalies themselves, which are just weird things. It's not like a robot with a gun or like a like a monster. Uh, you see weird that you just see things hovering rocks in the air, uh, mannequins will appear out of nowhere in the middle of the street and jump scare you, uh, electricity poles will just grow out of the ground, things will crumble around you, you'll see a mysterious cloud of dust or a wisp of electricity that you don't really know what it is, what it's gonna do to you, how you can actually potentially harness some of it. You have to actually just deal with it. Either take a hit, you know, scan it, and see what's going on. Like the sense of like not knowing what an enemy is and figuring it out is, is very cool because most games you see an enemy, you know what's gonna happen. But in this, they do it really well because it's again, it's all like stalker style, weird anomaly stuff, just like a wisp of electricity. And you're like, is that gonna kill me? Is that gonna screw me over? Most of the time it does, but yeah, there's, there's some stuff to it. But that sense of atmosphere and like that world building stuff, it's really with the car. The car, they do a really good job. The car controls like ass. <laughs> it does, uh, you know, until you upgrade it, it helps somewhat, but it's difficult. It's, it's, a, it's a very stubborn old car. And despite that still, I think atmospherically, sound design, visual design, driving it is an absolute dream, dude. Specifically because it actually, I think, and this is gonna sound like crazy, and I've played like, you know, on like a 4K screen, you know, Forza Motorsports, Forza 8, a million Gran Turismo 7, any of those things uh, with incredible high definition graphics and stuff. But here, in the car, in the rain, with the wipers on and one headlight busted and, and the rain pattering on the roof, that to me has given me the real sense of being in a car more than any other game I can think of in recent memory. And that's saying something. And you might like look at the gameplay and think like, yeah, Jake, you're full of shit. I don't know. Maybe it was because I was playing with headphones, but the, the wipers, the way the lighting worked, the lighting in the interior, the glow of the radio uh, and the dashboard and everything, it just, it just really, really worked. Coupled with the exterior style that is just uh, Pacific Northwest, very cool, but a little bit abstract. It's almost got like a kind of a mix between some of the weird scientific, like vague abstract stuff of, of Half-Life, really Half-Life 2, uh, and also uh, Inside, you know, the, the game, the follow-up to Limbo, I absolutely love Inside, and it, it had a lot of that dark gloominess to it. And the game does throw a lot at you. Rainstorms, the sun in your eyes, radiation storms, fog, absolute, complete, brutal darkness where your headlights barely cut through the darkness. A lot of surprises as you go through and a lot of modifiers on the environment that just, again, present a good danger, but also just establish a really good sense of place. Because uh, driving is so difficult, every road is cracked, there's always an obstacle, there's always something in your way, uh, it makes these environments, these non-open world environments, feel really vast. It, it does a really effective job. But to be able to have a lot of that stuff on the fly, like, you know, you're tooling up your car in your garage, but to have a bunch of stuff in your trunk, just feels great. You know, I would find myself 
uh, going off the road more to explore, you know, dark cabins to get loot and stuff. So I was like, oh shit. So I mounted some lights to the side of my car, like big spotlights that then project out into the woods and cover me as I ran away from my car. Uh, stuff you can install on the roof to protect from certain enemies that like to jump and cling onto your vehicle and, and sap its energy. Um, this kind of, <laughs> I say this is like the DeLorean weirdo, but like it does remind me of like a back to the future uh, DeLorean time machine where it is all very much handmade, real, tangible stuff. It feels a little bit thrown together. It's science-y, but like it, the car and everything you install in the car and the way everything looks and the way everything feels and how broken everything is, is and how often you have to fix it, it really does like something like, it's like a Mr. Fusion or like something you gotta whack with a wrench real quick to fire back up. Like it's just got a real good tangible feel from the inside of the car driving in first person, but then to just getting out of the car looking at it, uh, looking at it after coming through a really, really brutal run, and also just progressing through the game and making that car look cooler and cooler. I mean, it's still the Griswold's station wagon, but it's awesome. Paint jobs, stickers, uh, decals on the whole sides of the car, and then, you know, catering a little bit to your play style. Like if you're going, if you're revisiting an area where you kind of know what can potentially sort of happen, the game will always surprise you. But if you at least you, you know some of what you're going to face, uh, you can equip your car to kind of help with that. But I mean it with this one. And people think this is like such a throwaway phase because it can apply to every game. I get it. But like when I say this game isn't for everyone, I think it, it's specifically if you don't have the patience for it, and I don't mean patience like you beat Elden Ring, you're a gamer god, uh, but just how this one does, it, it's brutal in terms of driving. It's pretty bullshit. You might think I'm underselling it and you play it and you think it's easy, whatever. The difficulty is subjective, of course, but it challenged me and it, like it, it, like pushing my frustration to the limit where there were multiple times where I was like, is this game kind of bullshit? Is this game like obtusely? Difficult in weird ways that I just don't like, uh, but I kept kind of pushing forward and persevering because I wanted to see what would happen. And I, I learned to love it more and I kind of got, like I said, hooked on it. And the one point I wanted to make with this, and I see it a lot in comments, whether it's on Game Ranks or you guys comment on my Instagram or, or here in these videos, you're just done with video games now. Like I know a lot of people that just watch gaming videos, but they just hate all modern video games or they find them all disappointing. And I think that's totally valid and that's fine, but there's stuff out there. There's stuff out there. This is a good game. This is, I'm telling you, this is a good video game. And just because it's not tied to a big intellectual property or like a, you know, a, a company backing it to make sure it has like fucking ray traced graphics, who cares? This is an actual good video game. They are out there, but also this is different. If you are bored, if you are looking for that new, if you got that new sound you're looking for, it's this right here, straight up. It is different, it is challenging, it's flawed. Again, not gonna be for everybody and some people are gonna be pissed and immediately bounce off of it, but it tries things. It does different things. You're going to remember it because it's weird. It's freaking different. It attempts some really cool, interesting video game ideas and they made a thing that I played through that, you know, I can't say it's like anything else I've really totally played. Obviously, elements of other games are always echo through in other games, but Pacific Drive is kind of its own beast, and I really enjoy it for that. So again, you want new? You're looking for new? They are out there. Here you go, this is one. And even if you don't like this one, there are plenty. You just gotta know where to look and Pacific Drive was just like a really good example. So I, I kind of wanted to go on to that little tangent. I apologize, but thank you for listening to me. I think I got everything about Pacific Drive. I've covered everything between here and the before you buy. So I do wanna know what you think if you're playing and I wanna know what platform you're on. I played on PC, I had no issues. Let me know how it is on PS5 if you're playing there. Uh, but let me just know what you think about the game. Are you enjoying it? Did you find it as much of an uphill battle as I did? A literal almost uphill drive in terms of challenge? Do you like the world building? You know, what is your what is your favorite tool on your vehicle? Let's talk about this stuff. The game has things happen that like, you're gonna have stories. Like you're gonna go on a run and you're gonna like, oh man, this thing, this invisible thing knocked me off the road. And then I had to change my sp spare tire as I was dying of radiation poisoning. Like there are stories that crop up from this game. So I'd love to hear one if you got one, your first experience, anything Pacific Drive, let's talk down there. But I've rambled for a while, so thank you for listening to me here. Uh, if you get what I'm trying to do, I'm just talking about stuff I love, dude. Uh, clicking the like button does help me out, so thank you. But 
As always, I'm Jake Baldino. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me and subscribe because video games.